Luca Joe here. Today we'll be taking a look at Panzer Kampf Armored Clash. This is a game that will be uh, coming through a Kickstarter campaign very soon to be published by Trafalgar Editions designed by Jose Antonio Luengo. This is a tactical game that uses miniatures, resin miniatures, and the basic set that you will see here includes six tanks, three Panzer IVs, and three T-34s. Here we see the components that the basic game includes, and of course, these are pre-publications, so they are subject to change. The game includes two counter sheets. One of the counter sheets includes terrain features such as uh, small and larger trees with which you can form forests and also four wooden building structures. The game also includes another counter sheet with informational markers to keep track of uh, the status of your tanks. And also it includes player aids that allow you to measure the movement of your tanks on the playing area. And of course being a tactical tank game, the tanks are the stars here. And the game includes six resin miniatures, three Russian T-34s and three German Panzer IVs. And the miniatures of course come in the box unpainted but they have a lot of detail as you can see here in these other painted miniatures that were given to me by Trafalgar Editions. The detail is substantial for resin miniatures and also these resin miniatures have a certain weight to them. They're pretty heavy. They have detachable rotating turrets and that's important because in this game you are going to define the uh, field of fire of your tank by rotating the turret in the indicated directions. And also, the game will include more tanks that you can purchase separately from Trafalgar Editions. And I have here some of those. You have here the KV-1 heavy Russian tank, the SU-76 self-propelled gun, here we have on the German side, the famous Tiger tank. And also here we see the Stug 3. Here we see the vehicle card for the Panzer IV F1. Let's take a look at the information. We see an image of the vehicle and inside the image we see a square with a points value and this represents the value of the vehicle for victory point purposes. There's an arrow to the right which contains a number that represents the number of movement units that the vehicle can move in one turn. We also see the vehicle identification, that's the name of the vehicle, tank model and type. And then we see the armor and this is in millimeters the armor thickness of the mantlet, front, side, and rear of the tank. You also see information as to the primary armament. In the case of the Panzer IV, it is a 7.5 centimeter or 75 millimeter gun. We also have information as to the penetration of the main armament. And this is expressed in distances from D1, very short, to D5, very long. And in game turns, each of these levels represent increments of 30 centimeters. So D1 will be 0 to 30 centimeters, D2 more than 30, up to 60, D3 more than 60, up to 90, D4 more than 90 up to 120 and D5 more than 120 to 150 centimeters. We also see hit roll modifiers. This is the ranged base modifier that has to be applied to the die roll when determining hit attempts. 
And in the case of the Panzer IV, you see that it only applies at ranges D3 and upwards. There's a zero modifier at D1 and D2. We also see the basic damage value. This is the number that one has to roll equal or less to with two dice in order to deal damage to the target. And this varies depending on whether the target is hit. And this varies depending on where the target is hit. And finally, we see the defensive armor modifier. Some vehicles have better armor than others. The attacker has to add or subtract this modifier to their basic damage value dice roll. Let's take a look at the sequence of play. Each turn consists of several phases that are completed in the following order. First is the initiative phase. Each player rolls 1d6 and the player with the highest roll wins the initiative and moves second. Now the player that wins the initiative will have a minus one die roll modifier penalty for the next initiative roll. The next phase is the repairs phase and vehicles that have a damaged gun or turret may attempt repairs. However, only one repair attempt is allowed per turn. Next is the movement phase. The player who lost the initiative moves first, followed by the player who won the initiative. And players can use all, some or none of their movement allowance. Next is the turret movement phase. Once both players have moved all their vehicles, they can now move the turret facing of their tanks. Next is the turret movement phase. Once both players have moved all their vehicles, now they can alter the turret facing of their tanks. And finally comes the fire phase. And this fire phase is considered simultaneous for both players. Both players make rolls to hit with firing vehicles and then they determine damage and of the hits have occurred. And lastly is the fire phase, which is considered simultaneous for both players. Players roll dice to determine if their vehicles hit their intended targets, and if so, then they determine damage. Here we see the vehicle card for the Panzer IV F1. Let's take a look at the information. We see an image of the vehicle and inside the image, we see a square with a points value. And this represents the value of the vehicle for victory point purposes. There's an arrow to the right, which contains a number that represents the number of movement units that the vehicle can move in one turn. We also see the vehicle identification. That's the name of the vehicle, the tank model and type. And then we see the armor, and this is in millimeters, the armor thickness of the mantlet, front, side, and rear of the tank. You also see information as to the primary armament. In the case of the Panzer IV, it is a 7.5 centimeter or 75 millimeter gun. We also have information as to the penetration of the main armament. And this is expressed in distances from D1, very short, to D5, very long. And in game turns, each of these levels represent increments of 30 centimeters. So D1 will be 0 to 30 centimeters, D2 more than 30, up to 60, D3 more than 60, up to 90, D4 more than 90, up to 120, and D5 more than 120 to 150 centimeters. We also see hit roll modifiers. This is the ranged base modifier that has to be applied to the die roll 
when determining hit attempts. And in the case of the Panzer IV, you see that it only applies at ranges D3 and upwards. There's a zero modifier at D1 and D2. We also see the basic damage value. This is the number that one has to roll equal or less to with two dice in order to deal damage to the target. And this varies depending on whether the target is hit. And this varies depending on where the target is hit. And finally, we see the defensive armor modifier. Some vehicles have better armor than others. The attacker has to add or subtract this modifier to their basic damage value dice roll. This game is played in turns. First comes the initiative phase where players roll 1d6. The high roller has the initiative. And then in the next turn, the player with the initiative will have a minus one die roll modifier to his initiative die roll. Next comes the repairs phase where vehicles with a damaged gun or turret may attempt repairs, but you can only attempt to repair one thing at a time in each tank. Next comes the movement phase. The player who lost the initiative moves first, and then the player with the initiative moves. And next comes the turret movement phase. Here, the players can alter the turret facing of their tanks, which is important in order to determine to which targets uh, the tanks can fire. And then the last phase is the fire phase, and this fire is considered simultaneous. Players make rolls to determine whether their tanks hit their targets, and if they did, then they conduct further rolls to determine the extent of the damage. Now, movement in this game is done using these player aids, which are movement unit arrows. And these arrows are placed in front of the tank that is about to move. Now, this tank, the T-34, as you see by the arrow on the top of the card, has a movement allowance of three movement units. So that means that we can place up to three arrows for the T-34, and it is very simple. You just place the arrow in front of the tank if you want to move in a straight direction. You can also place it at an angle in order to have the vehicle turn, but the angle cannot be 90 degrees. Any tank that is going to turn 90 degrees has to spend one movement unit just to make the turn. So we place the arrows in the direction that we want our tank to move. And in the case of this particular example, we simply move the tank and place it in front of the point of the last arrow. Now that tank moved its full movement allowance of three movement units. And we have to mark the tanks using these markers, a plus three because it moved three units of movement. And that plus three is important because if the tank fires, that's gonna be a die roll modifier penalty to that tank's fire. And also if the tank is fired upon, the tank that is firing will also add uh, that plus three to its two hit die roll. So that, that reflects in a very simple, but I think effective way, how hard it is to hit a moving target. This basic set includes certain terrain features like these uh, tree counters, which during setup players alternate placing on the map and these counters will uh, delineate what are forests in the game. So you see that these are the outer trees, the ones in the outside. Those uh, tell us the extent of the forest. That is important because when moving through a forest, a tank may become immobilized. So let's say that the T-34 uh, is about to move and uh, we place the first movement unit and it has to stop immediately when it enters the forest. So at the end 
of that first move, we have to stop the tank. And we make a die roll to see if the tank becomes immobilized. And only on a six, it does. So here the result is a four. So in the next turn, it can continue to move normally. But if the result would have been a six, then we place behind the tank this immobilized marker and the tank cannot move for the remainder of the game. In this game, when a vehicle makes a turn that is at least 90 degrees, but not 180 degrees, it spends one unit of movement. So let's say that this Panzer IV starts by moving forward one unit of movement and after doing so, it then makes a 90 degree turn. That would count as its second unit of movement. And in the case of the Panzer IV, it only has two units of movement as its movement allowance. And it costs two units of movement to effect a 180 degree turn. So let's say that this T-34 starts by uh, changing its facing or turning 180 80 degrees. It has consumed two movement units and now it has one left and it moves forward as so. Vehicles can also move in reverse but to a limit of just one unit of movement. So we place the arrow behind the vehicle and we affect the movement. In this game there's a, let's say an inertia rule. Moving at your full movement allowance means that in the next turn, that vehicle cannot stop on a dime. And let me illustrate here with a T-34. T-34 has a maximum movement allowance of three units. So in its first turn, it will move the three units and we place the plus three uh, modifier marker to indicate so. Now in the next turn, the T-34 has to move at least one unit of movement. It cannot stop and remain where it is. So let's say that it moves as so. And we place that plus one marker. And remember that in this game, the more that a tank moves, the harder it is to hit and the harder it is for that tank to hit some other tank because we, uh, use those positive modifiers in the to hit determination. We use the positive modifiers of the moving firing tank and positive modifiers of the moving target tank as well. After the movement phase comes the turret adjustment phase. And here the players roll a die if they want to uh, change the direction of their turret. And uh, the possible results are on a one or two, the player can rotate the turret up to 60 degrees in either direction, left or right. On a three or four, he can rotate the turret up to 120 degrees in either direction. And on a five or six, the turret can be rotated to any direction. And the game brings this uh, template for that particular purpose. We place uh, the template on top of the tank, aligning the depiction of the turret on the template with that, uh, with the turret on the tank, and we roll a die. And uh, for example, here the result is a four, so we can rotate the turret up to 120 degrees. So it's more or less there. Now if we had rolled a one, could have been to a maximum of 60 degrees and it could have been to the right side or it could have been to the left side. And the next phase is the fire phase and this phase is considered simultaneous. This is where players fire their tanks at their intended targets and the uh, fire is resolved in a three step process. First, we determine impact. That is to see if the shot hits the enemy target. Second, we determine if there's any damage to the target tank. And if so, then the third step is to 
determine the extent of the damage. For the first step, which is determining impact, the game brings this template, which gives you the basic impact value. And you see that this is expressed as a result of two dice being rolled. So if an enemy tank is in clear terrain, you need nine or less to hit. And you're saying, well, nine or less, that's very easy to hit. But remember, there's some modifiers to be applied that we will take a look uh, now very soon. If the tank is in a wooded area, it's two to seven. If the tank is hull down, two to six. And if the tank is immobilized in woods, it is also two to six. There's a series of modifiers that affect that two hit die roll. And the first one is distance. And we have to determine the range between the firing tank and the target tank. And as stated before, the ranges here are calculated in bands D1, D2, up to D5, and each band represents 30 centimeters. So for example, if we're firing at a distance of D2, that it means that it's at least 60 centimeters. So we have to measure the distance from the firing tank to the target. So next we determine the distance to target. And we can also use this template that allows us to determine if the shot will enter the target's front or its side. In this particular example, it's going to be obvious that it is a uh, shot to the front, but sometimes you uh, don't know until you calculate it. And we will be using an app for the iPhone that is called Measure. And I have another iPhone here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll simply point the point there in the center, place it on the barrel of the firing tank, and then we will uh, locate the target and place it here on top of the target. So there we go. And that is a distance of 61 centimeters. So that's going to be D3, 61 centimeters. D1 goes up to 30 d2 goes up to 60 and this is 61. so we take a look at the t34's card and we see here in modifier to hit roll at d3 we have to add a plus one so that's the modifier for distance and remember because the target is in open terrain we have to roll uh, nine or less final die roll after modifiers to hit the target we, we have a plus one because of distance but there's more modifiers the soviet tank moved one unit of movement during the movement phase so that's plus one so now we're at plus two and the target panzer IV moved two units of movement so we add that plus two also so we're now at plus four and it is after considering distance and movement that now we roll 2d6 and add plus four and we need nine or less to hit so we roll the dice and it's five plus four exactly a nine so that's a hit and now we proceed to the second step in the fire determination which is to determine if there is any damage. So now we consult the T-34's basic damage value. That is the uh, number of, uh, that we have to roll with 2d6 to inflict any damage on the target. And we know that the facing is front. So we have to roll two through six to inflict any damage. But before rolling, we have to consult the targets defensive armor modifier and we see there that the front armor of the panzer IV has a zero so there's no modification but if the shot would have entered through the side or rear there would have been a minus two to this upcoming 
dice rolls. Now we roll 2d6 and we need six or less to inflict damage on the Panzer IV, and the result is an eight, no damage. So here this uh, exercise would stop, but let's suppose that instead of an eight, the Russians rolled a six, and there is damage. And when there is damage, then we have to compare the penetration power of the firing gun to the armor of the target enemy vehicle. So now we take a look at the penetration power of the T-34. And we see that at D3, using the standard APCB ammunition, it is a penetration rating of 59. And now we compare that with the armor rating of the target vehicle. And we see that the front of the Panzer IV has an armor rating of 50 millimeters. So the penetration a rating of the Russian tank exceeds these 50 millimeters. That means that the Panzer IV is destroyed. Now there are circumstances in the game where the penetration rating does not exceed the target's armor at the applicable facing. Let's say that the uh, T-34 was firing at D5. There, the penetration rating would be 48, which does not exceed the Panzer IV's armor of 50. In that case, we still roll a die because there could still be a critical hit inflicted. And in order for a critical hit to occur, the armor penetration of the firing gun must be at least 50% or more of the target vehicle's armor, which is the case in this last example, where the uh, Soviet tank has uh, a rating of 48 and the German tank has uh, 50 millimeters. So we roll 1d6 on the critical hit table. On a roll of two, uh, the turret is damaged. On a roll of three, the hull is damaged. On a roll of four, the engine is damaged. And on a roll of five, the chains are damaged. And each of these damages has a particular effect. On a roll of six, there is no effect. Now, on a roll of one, the gun is damaged, but only, only if the penetration value of the firing tank, the T-34 in this example, is 50% or more than the combined armored rating of the target's gun mantlet plus front. In this case, it would be 100 millimeters. So that means that for a critical hit to occur on the target's gun, the T-34 would need to have a penetration rating of at least 50. And we saw that at D5, the penetration rating is 48. So if a one is rolled, there will not be a critical hit inflicted on the Panzer IV's gun. Now another consideration is the use of special ammunition. And you'll see that most of these tanks can fire two types of ammunition. You see here that in the case of a T-34, the top row reads APCB. That's the standard ammunition. But you can use the special APCR ammo, which has increased penetration, especially at ranges D1 and D2. The downside is that after you use the special ammo, you have to roll two dice. And on a roll of seven or more, that special ammunition is expended for the rest of the game. So that tank can't use it anymore. And we would mark that by placing this counter on the vehicle card if you're just playing one tank against one tank. And if you're using more than one type of uh, identical tank, you just simply place the ammo marker there with the uh, movement uh, modifier mark. Let's take a look at the various types of critical hits. The first type is a critical hit to the tank's gun. While the gun is malfunctioning, it cannot fire, but you can try to repair it during the repair phase. You roll one die on a roll of one, it's repaired. But on a roll of six, this uh, 
gun will not work for the remainder of the game. It is broken. The same thing happens with the tank's turret. It uh, can malfunction. You can try to repair it. But if you roll a six, the turret is broken and you can't rotate the turret for the remainder of the game. The tank can also suffer critical hits to its hull and it can suffer more than one critical hit for each critical hit to the hull. The opponent will have an extra modifier of minus one to the damage roll. So the tank is easier to destroy uh, the more hull damage it has. And then there's also a critical hit to the tank's engine. And we mark that with this marker here. And a tank that has suffered an engine hit will lose one movement unit per engine hit down to zero. So it can become immobilized. And if the tank is immobilized, we signify that by using this immobilized marker. And the other type of critical hit is to the tank's tracks. And if a tank receives a track hit, the tank is immobilized. So you just place the immobilized marker. You can't repair a track hit during the course of a battle. This game also has random events and uh, there is a series of random event chits that we place in an opaque cup and whenever during a to hit dice roll determination a tank rolls doubles we pull one random event chit from the cup. This one for example is shot bounce and this one has the effect of canceling damage from one hit. Here we see other possible random events impact in the turret ring. We have Stuka and Sturmovic attacks, rapid fire, friendly fire. We also have uh, the steer is jammed, gun damage, deflected shot. We see some chits with a wrench. Those are emergency repair chits. And we see some that state uh, the phrase ghost panzer. These have to be used immediately. An enemy tank chosen by the player who drew the marker is relocated at its maximum speed by randomly determining which direction it moves using the turret turn template. And there's also random events that uh, are those of Commander Exposed, CE. So a tank commander has... Uh, been exposed and the vehicle is given a minus one to its to hit roll and damage roll. So these are the random events that may occur in the game. And when a tank is destroyed, there's a chance the crew may survive and fight another day. You can uh, make campaigns in this game. So the crew can earn also uh, experience points and the survival roll is expressed here in the right top corner for the t-34 it is a roll of less than three with 1d6 so this is panzerkampf the basic set designed by jose antonio luengo and to be published by trafalgar editions in its kickstarter campaign that starts november 25th and i hope that this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.